Okay, let's go across to NDTV's Vishnu Shom, and we're also joined by Dr. Madhava Nair, former ISRO chief. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. And Vishnu, first to you. You know that is the last word we had from ISRO regarding this launch, uh, and nothing more since then. No, nothing more since then. And I think it is a matter of concern that there was data loss uh, in the final phase. In as much as we applaud uh, ISRO for you know the first three uh, stages of the rocket uh, having performed. Apparently, all right. The fact that there is data loss means that the final outcome of the mission on whether or not it's successful uh, is something which is still very much in question. A mission becomes successful if not only the rocket motors fire properly, uh, but also if the satellites are obviously injected into their uh, into their correct orbit. At this juncture, a lack of data or a loss of data means ISRO uh, needs to find out whether or not there has been a stable injection of these satellites at the proper orbit. Then of course they'd gauge to uh, you know they'd look to see if the satellites are working the way they are. Now ISRO has pulled off m much more complicated missions than this, and yes, of right. course it's a maiden launch. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, uh, it's it, it, it's tense. Science is difficult, engineering is difficult at all stages. Uh, but one would hope that they come back to us with information where they say that look, you know, this has worked and this has not worked. Oh, this is where we are. This is what we know, and this is what we not. Oh, we don't know at this stage. Right, uh, Dr. Madhavan, now that this was a historic launch, and it's coming just before uh, 15th August, and 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 as Vishnu was saying, at this point, uh, you know, that's the last word we ha we've had from the chairman of ISRO. Still waiting, you know, for more information about uh, how this launch went. Uh, well, certainly the launch uh, initial phase was a tremendous success as announced by Chairman Isro, and also we were watching the performance of the rocket motors, etc., uh, through the plot boards. Uh, it looks like uh, the three rock, new mo rocket motors have performed uh, very well, but at the same time, uh, there is no confirmation about the final orbit uh, parameters as well as the performance of the spacecraft. Unless the spacecraft is injected into the correct orbit, and the sequence of events which has to take place in the spacecrafts are initiated properly, uh, we will not uh, get the signals. So we have to really dig into the reason for this. And it is not that uh, going to be an easy task. We have faced uh, several failures in the past. Uh, uh, we had to wait through thousands of pages of data uh, before we could uh, arrive at some, some conclusion. Uh, so I'm sure at Sri Harikota, the ISRO team must be toiling and uh, they'll be going over and over again uh, through the telemetry data which is available to them to pinpoint right. the reason why the data loss has happened. Right. Uh, it's all the same. Within right. a very short time, uh, ISRO has come out with a very new rocket system. That's a creditable achievement and all the rockets have performed well. Right, Dr. Nair. So, uh, you know, it's been over an hour since uh, the last word from ISRO. And, and so uh, how long would it take for them to tell us uh, exactly, you know, what has happened? Well, it's a, it's a very, very complex uh, mission. And as you know, the uh, thousands of uh, pages of uh, data will be pouring in. And uh, several specialists have to go through. Uh, apparently, uh, the, up to the third stage, everything seems to have been normal and third stage also has performed well but in the plot board there is some anomaly seen uh, i am not in shri kota i am in tiruvan i am sure, not to be to the detailed information uh, but at right. the same time on the plot board i can see that there is some deviation in the path has occurred during the final phase of the launch and that could be one reason or otherwise there could be some anomaly uh, while separation uh, we have to uh, really look for the next uh, orbital cycle where other ground stations are able to capture the signal or not. Then only we'll be able to conclude. Maybe it will take a few hours before we can have a preliminary finding. But okay. the detailed finding will take uh, perhaps uh, uh, days to weeks. Right. Vishnu? Um, Dr. Nair, a couple of points. I noticed exactly what you were talking about, that there was a little wobble during the S3 burnout. Um, I noticed that also on the boards, um, but then there was an interesting uh, development when there was actual video of one of the satellites, uh, which was actually, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the fairing had, had separated and the satellite was evidently being injected. I'm just trying to understand, is there an element of autonomy in these satellites as well? 
uh, are they designed to actually ping uh, their, their status and their health, irrespective of whether data has been lost at this stage between the rocket and the ground station? Uh, all the operations in a launch of this kind is uh, pre-programmed and it is taken over by the computer. Uh, uh, first two stages go as per a predetermined trajectory, but in the final phase, to achieve a precise orbit, uh, certain maneuvers will have to be made. There, one has to determine the actual position velocity of the rocket and steer the rocket to achieve the final desired object. So any anomaly, any, any fault which is taking place in the sensors or in the computer or in the actuator could lead to uh, such a situation. So unless uh, those data is really studied in detail, we cannot pinpoint the reason. But there, there is certainly, there is a deviation in the path during the final phase of the launch. And perhaps uh, once a rocket has reached a particular altitude and the time, the spacecraft uh, separation command is given and spacecraft would have separated. And since it is well above the atmosphere, uh, the separation would have been clean. But if the orbit is not correct, then naturally the subsequent ground stations will not be able to capture these signals. Or maybe if something has gone wrong within the satellite itself, we will not be able to get such signals. Right. Uh, right Dr. Nair, given you know, um, the fact that we're still awaiting that final word, uh, would it would you say it's not looking good right now uh, uh, you know as, as we're still awaiting that final word on the success of this mission uh, I, I will not uh, make a final judgment of that kind because as i told you this is a small rocket uh, launcher which is conceived and implemented within a very short possible time and uh, the cost optimization weight optimization and also finally how it can get into commercial market. All these aspects have been considered. And within the shortest possible time, ISRO has come out with a new rocket system. That is really, really a creditable achievement. Right. All the rockets have performed as desired also. That is also a good achievement. As you know, in the SLV-3, PSLV, we had a similar situations where the rockets have performed extremely well, but finally we have not uh, reached the final orbit. Uh, so perhaps uh, here also uh, could be a similar phenomena, but uh, we have to really identify what has caused it. Right, and Vishnu, right. this was a special, you know, lift off given the involvement of so many school children and you know, girl children as well in 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 the. Yeah, in the and, you know, I think uh, I think it's fair to say that unless uh, you know, I mean, something happens and and they come back and they say, you know, mission success, it's actually gone to the right orbit and it appears to have opened up its its uh, its solar sails and it is working and that's a, i would suggest a pretty long task uh, ahead then you know there'd be a fair amount of disappointment uh, because this had uh, the azadi sat it's a small yes. satellite weighs about 8 kilos 750 school kids around the country had uh, sort of worked towards it uh, girl children involved towards it it had a couple of selfie cameras on board a yes. bunch of science experiments on board this was one of the two satellites the other was an earth observation satellite but i would suggest and i'm sure dr madhavan nair would agree with me that that that, that failure uh, and success go hand in hand in in high science and and high engineering so if there's a lesson for these children it is number one you need to hold your breath for a little while longer and number two if you fail or this mission fails it only means that you need to strive to work harder to make it work again because it's not easy and you know success and failure with high engineering is it's part of the game so we can't keep that out of our sight right dr madhavan nair a final word from you uh, i fully agree with you so and uh, certainly uh, you know this is a high risk game and uh, the school children definitely it will be a little bit of disappointment if they cannot get a signal uh, but i'm sure they can build similar satellites uh, with whatever knowledge they have gained so far and in such missions, the failures are not uncommon. Learning from such failures and making sure that they don't repeat, that is the motto of ISRO. And uh, I'm sure ISRO will raise to the vacation and uh, will not disappoint the nation. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nair, for joining us uh, on the program. And thank you, Vishnu, uh, also for joining us with the very latest there. And uh, we'll keep hoping for the best.